we are Celebate, a biotech company that is here, located in Medicon Village, which in itself is a reason to be proud. But uh, that's not why I am so very proud. It's because in less than three years, the fantastic Celebate team managed to bring to the market, to launch and start selling, the first nanofiber-based cell culture systems that are developed and validated for enhancing, improving um, the viral vector production, uh, the upstream bioprocessing side of it. So um, you are going to be now part of the world's first. How many times are you having that opportunity? Um, before going into the product and uh, its performance, a quick snapshot of Celevate. Um, the company was uh, founded um, from Professor Lars Montelius group at Nanolund. Then, um, since 2021, during the last three years, um, we uh, changed uh, the strategy and the management to harness the power of the nanotechnology that we have as our core um, and bring its advantages into um, upstream bioprocessing, into industrial applications uh, based on a number of uh, patented production methods. Financing, of course, um, until today um, we raised uh, uh, about 12 uh, million euro, of which uh, 3.2 uh, soft funding. Um, we were awarded uh, EIC uh, accelerator, which was the kind of the ground to it. Then um, we had also an equity uh, part from EIC fund uh, through EIB. And we run two seed rounds, uh, 23 closing and 24 recently in October, uh, under the leadership of uh, Industry Fund and um, syndicating with uh, EIC, EIB, and on-site ventures from Austria. Um, and all of it to bring the company to commercialization and to bring the products to the market. We are going to now uh, invest in aggressive commercialization and we are preparing for the next steps. We are going to double. Uh, during uh, next year we um, have a focus on prioritized geographies in Europe um, and also US, which is a very important market. We have a core team um, already there and we are building on. Um, and in 2025 and forward we count on bringing one product launch per year uh, to be able to um, enter into the different applications of the novel biotherapies. In gene therapy, we are now viral vectors, but we also work with uh, cell therapy products, uh, novel vaccines, um, and that will also uh, add to all the quality management system we have now in place. We will add an ISO 9001 and uh, uh, a production according to GMP. We are moving into the new building, which is um, ready, um, customized for our needs. And we count on breaking even in 2028. Now, why do we need this uh, kind of solutions? The emergence of these miracle therapies has really changed the way uh, we treat diseases like never before. However, if you think that there are 31 approved gene therapies, of which eight just the last um, 18 months, um, only 10,000 patients have been treated since 2015, since the first patient got the first dose. And that is just 10,000. There are 3 million that are calculated to be in need of this in Europe and US only. Why don't we get more of it? Because they have um, extremely high co cost of production associated with an extremely high price tag, 500,000 euro to 1 million euro per dose. So there is a lot of pressure from regulatory uh, authorities, national authorities, uh, to change that. And 
um, in this uh, environment, there is a, a very big um, need for innovation, disruptive technologies uh, that would change the status quo and bring this cost so much lower. There are three main challenges uh, in the bioproduction. The very low yield that is actually originating from the cell culture steps, which we are addressing. It's the productivity and it's the scalability to go up in scale to produce as much as we need. That is where we are coming in with our solution. Uh, Celevate 3D nanotechnology is a conventional electro spinning to which we have uh, added um, the patent pending uh, steps that we are then able to work with these uh, nanofibers in a liquid form and then mold them into any kind of shape or form uh, that would fit different applications and different bioreactors. It's um, single use, it's scalable and it's sustainable. We work with cellulose. The platform has led now into two product formats. One that you see in the insert, that is the difference between them. One is the microcarrier, monofibers. The other is uh, cross-linked fibers. And they are suitable for different types of application, different types of, of bioreactors. Star tank bioreactors for viral vector production and that kind of application. And then pack and fix that bed for the microcarriers. We are in development with the microcarriers, is one of the launches that we will bring, and we are now focusing on the one that we just recently launched at BioEurope just two weeks ago, our novel nanofiber-based uh, cell culture systems. The market is extremely high, is growing, is up to uh, 3.6 uh, billion euro in 2025. Now, um, the product. Um, we have been working with the nanofibers and the nanotechnology. They offer an extremely high surface area for cells to grow. It's 60 times larger than the current solutions. This in its turn is uh, leading to extremely high um, yield of the product of interest. Um, it's very easy to use, implementing it straightforward into current um, bioreactors and processes, and it's very easy to, to scale. This leading into uh, faster processes and increase in productivity, more than 300%, which is then leading into reducing cost of production, improving process economy. So, um, if we start with one extremely interesting parameter when working with the nanofibers in the bioreactors, they are forming homogeneous cell dense spheroids, this, this round kind of that you can actually see here. Um, and looking into them, our partners uh, at Charles River, they analyzed and found out that in um, the spheroids that are about the same size as the current conventional bead carrier, there are 5,000 cells per spheroid compared to 100 because they grow only on the surface on the conventional one, whereas for us they form these 3D structures that are cell dense, high viability. So 50 times more than the current one. Now, how does this translate into the process when producing your AAVs, viral vectors? Then um, the transfection efficiency is extremely high because you have this possibility to transfect directly into the spheroids. 94% uh, is usually 70 to 80. It goes much faster, the process, and it's also saving plasmid costs that are extremely high. Then we have a study that has done by uh, the viral vector team at UCL. They are three times higher fold or more than that compared to current standard um, of the titers, and then the scalability that we have done at Testa Center in the Cytiva uh, bioreactor, the most commonly used one in viral vector production. So I'm going to end with the sales, and that's why we are bringing the product to the market to get it out to the customers. And we follow the strategy along the development, process development of the CDMOs and pharmas, where there are three possibilities to design in your product. And that's now that we have started with the 
first product, the starter pack, that is developed for the evaluation so that the new projects that are 12 to 15,000 every year, they will take it and then evaluate it, compare it, benchmarking, finding the, the, all the benefits and then integrate it into the platform and moving along to the large scale. And last, revenue distribution for uh, typical viral vector production, uh, the microcarriers, the use of them in the different design stages. If we look at the research discovery, 75,000 euro per year per project, as they get into the large scale, getting approved, getting regulatory approval, we talk about much higher than that. So thank you from all of us and looking forward to your questions. Thank you. So, first question, short, sweet, maybe spicy. What is your current financial status? Uh, our current financial status is uh, a very nice one because we just uh, closed the uh, round, so we are ready for just the commercialization journey that we started. Can you be a bit more specific than nice? <laughs> well, um, yeah, um, we, we um, raised uh, 36.4 uh, million uh, Swedish crowns uh, in the second seed round, so that's it. Yes. Great. What needs to happen for you to break, reach break even in 2028? Um, it needs to, to happen that um, we are going to um, aggressively, uh, that maybe, yeah, um, grow. Um, the team and then with the different uh, uh, launches and commercialization into the different applications, so adding them um, to, uh, now we start with the viral vector, but then we are going to work with vaccines and also uh, uh, cell therapy, stem cell therapy production. So we are then uh, going to expand our portfolio into uh, more areas and we are also expanding geographically. Uh, prioritize geographies, but then also uh, reaching out US, an in extremely important market. Uh, so we have both uh, scale up the team, scale up the uh, geography, scale up commercialization. Mm. And we have some financing rounds, of course. Of course. Um, <clears throat> I think you told us a lot about the product in your presentation. If you would compare it to your competition, what makes it stand out in your point of view? Uh, that is exactly what we have tried to show, not we, because these are results from um, our validation program in collaboration with partners. Uh, that's what we have been doing, because coming as a newcomer to this market, which is actually quite conservative and quite uh, established. Um, I'm looking at Peter, he does like this. Uh, so yes, uh, bioprocessing is uh, dominated by a number of um, big dragons uh, uh, and that is why here we are able to show that we have a completely different way of working in uh, upstream uh, bioprocessing. So it's a new category that is actually, I would say that you can't even compare it because it provides uh, a completely different way of transforming this kind of uh, bioproduction. Mm. Was it that that attracted you to the company in the first place? Yes, it was. It was the, the potential and the, um, uh, actually the opportunity to transform what's going on right now and helping the patients. I think that's in the end what we all want to do, right? I think that's a beautiful way to stop. Thank you so much for Thank your presentation. You. Thank you very much.